This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plan, celebrating 77 years of providing Tennesseans with high quality health coverage at affordable prices. Visit FBHP.com today to learn about their history in Tennessee and to get a quote. That's FBHP.com. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Special guest, special place, good stuff. Tailgate Brewery. Mm-hmm. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Coach Dave McGinnis is here. Yes, I am. Rhett Bryan is here. Present and accounted for. The Titans radio team, assemble. Assemble. <laughs> Let's go. That always works In somehow. the brewery. This is great. Yeah. It worked in Anchorman, so. It, it worked for us, yes. too, weirdly. <laughs> I feel like Brick Tamblin in this equation. <laughs> <laughs> you do love lamp. Yep. I do love lamp. <laughs> we need one. Why are we yelling? <laughs> Why are we yelling? Chattanooga Titans fans have welcomed us to the scenic city. We are excited to be here and excited to spend time with them because what's really great, we love what we do. Mm -hmm. We are very thankful that we are at the games on Sunday, but we do miss viewing parties with Titans fans. And we've always wanted to experience that. So we said, who are some of the coolest people that we know of, who have a great viewing party every week, it's the Chattanooga Titans fans. Blake Shoemaker. Yeah. They heard us. See what I mean? (laughs) And if you're watching this edition of the OTP, you can see. If you're not, you can just hear it and believe us. (laughs) Blake, how are you? Doing well. Welcome to town. Well, it's great to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Absolutely. So this group has been together. I see they have an official patch and everything. The patch is great. We're going to have to get into the patches, too, because it's just the coolest thing. But let's start at the beginning. Year six of this group. How did this group happen? Well, it's funny. Our original members, Brian and Chris, uh, actually met at a bar just up the street. Okay. Uh, there was nowhere here in town in Chattanooga to watch the games. Seriously? Uh, there was not. There was no organized watch party, nothing like that. And they just happened to run into each other at this establishment up the road. And uh, one of them noticed that Chris was wearing one of his London NFL scarves from going to one of the NFL London games for the Titans. And they had been in attendance at the same game. And it struck up this conversation about, well, you were there? Well, we were there. And we need to do something. We need to, you know, make something here in town to make this kind of a special thing to go watch games together. And it kind of evolved from there. It started with four people and just kind of evolved from there. And, uh, you know, year number six and growing by leaps and bounds. How early do you get here on Sundays? We get here probably an hour, hour and a half before kickoff uh, to set up all the flags and all the, uh, the signage outside and everything just to kind of attract people in. And uh, it's really neat to kind of see more and more people come in over the course of the day. We've had so many people, you know, we're doing our first down chance. We're doing our third down chance. And people out on the street walking down the road hear us outside, and it brings them in. Wow. That's great. Yeah. That's awesome. So you're great. the Pied Pipers of the Titans <laughs> in Chattanooga. I know, right? So do people who are, if they're, like, driving through town, spending the weekend here, and our Titans fans, do they ever just pop by to be part of it? We do. It, it's funny because the social media presence has made it so much easier, you know, being on Twitter or being on Facebook, things like that. People will be here in town and they're like, well, heck, I'm here in a major city in Tennessee. There's got to be a place to watch the game, right? And we've had people come in all the time and say that they found us or they heard us while they were here in town staying at the Choo Choo next door or whatever. It is great. It's next to the Chattanooga Choo Choo. Right. Yeah, really cool. I mean, Mikey, and you've got to realize that when you come out here to watch a game with this group of people, it's so much more than just watching the game. A, as he said earlier, they do all the chants that they do at Nissan Stadium. So it gets rowdy in here, I would presume. It does. And, I mean, the acoustics in this place are immaculate. I mean, the echo that just kind of drives through the place is pretty (laughs) awesome. So do you see fans of other NFL teams running out of here when they (laughs) – do you drive them out? No, you know, it's funny you say that. We actually have uh, people – uh, you know, from all walks of life, all locations here in Chattanooga, and they come in to watch their games, and we just kind of welcome them like family. That's nice. Uh, you know, we see teams that, you know, travel well. We've had Packers fans in here. We've had Bears fans in here. We've had fans of all other kinds of teams. But, you know, we good-natured ribbing, but, you know, everybody's welcome. They also have a setup here that is great. They have the entire second floor, and so they are able to really spread out, make the place their own. Um, people who are watching on YouTube can kind of see a little bit that there are flags and all kinds of signage behind us. But for those of you listening in a 
audio only format. Let me just tell you, it looks fantastic. And there's so many different eras of Titans represented. There's so many different flags and giveaways from over the years that are here. Um, when you guys decided like, we need to make this place our own, we need to what start a collection maybe have everyone chip in and be like hey do you have any titans merchandise titans flags that you want to display how do, how does that even happen yeah it's it's funny because you know some of them are as simple as game giveaways mm -hmm. you know we've gone to the game and they were giving them away that day or we were out and about and we saw a store that had a flag that looked a little different than the one we've had and you know some of them are like that as simple as that and then there are others that have stories i mean Right above us is a flag from the, the Baltimore game uh, in Europe this past year, and Chris was there uh, and got one of the flags while he was there. We have some of the pennants that hung out in the official Titans team bar mm -hmm. there in town that we were able to get. And so, you know, some of them have stories, and some of them even have design elements where, you know, people in our group have actually designed the flags and everything. And that's the same with these patches. So they have patches for every era of chattanooga titans fans every single year yeah which is so cool and so they get do these giveaways during the game as well so you're engaged the entire time what kind of giveaways uh, do you want a patch oh the, the <laughs> patches <laughs> are the giveaways. well i can give you well, one right now well, they i can gave give me it away one. yeah they gave me one hmm. yeah i mean it's amazing because you know we do the, the patches every year and we kind of collaborate on the design see what we're going to come up with and then we basically sell them you know close to cost and then we use those proceeds to kind of buy the giveaways so if we're out and about and we see something at a local retailer like oh they have these you know a titan's bluetooth speaker or they mm -hmm. have this or they have that you know it's kind of a collection of that and then we've increased you know our presence the team is becoming aware of us so last year it was a huge deal for us to get listed on the titans website as an official you know watch party partner here in chattanooga uh, so they've sent us some stuff. They were kind enough to send us a couple of mini helmets last year that were signed by Jeffrey Simmons. Ooh. Oh, that's uh, very cool. So those are really big items for uh -huh. us, you know. So uh, so the team has been really kind on that kind of thing. Sent us a bunch of these pennants also. This is a great setup. I mean, I come walking in here. It, it, I know this isn't a – is this a visual medium? What yeah, are we doing? It, it okay. can be. Well, the, yeah. the can answer, be the if you're on yes. the Titans YouTube channel. Yeah, get on Titans YouTube. This is outstanding. Let me let – me just. Uh, You know, this reminds me, it's speaking about London, when we went to London, I mean, it's absolutely nuts over there, the Titans fans. They're holding nothing over y'all, I promise you. That's good stuff here. This is, this, is, this is impressive. It really is. We love it. I mean, it's, it, it's, we just can't wait for the season to begin. So do you start in preseason even? You know, we even had a draft party. So Did you really? We, had a, we totally had a draft yes. party. Yeah, yeah. In fact, that big chain you see glowing in the background debuted <laughs> at the draft party, the Oilers Derek there. Okay, and, uh, there's, a, there's a gentleman yeah. here, and his name is? Chris. Chris. Chris has a giant chain with a giant oil Derek on it that's neon. Yes, it lights up. Chris, come on here. Just get up. Come I mean, it is really. I can, I can tell you're yeah. a shy dude anyway. Why would you We're, not? Why not? Why not? Take a take you know? a big picture of this. Look at this. This is that's as, nice, Chris. This is as good as it, it gets right nice. here. He's the one that's how heavy the is patches. that, Chris? It's not too heavy. It's not. Too, oh, did Coach Max sign your oil, Derek? Will Levis. Will Levis. Well, that's better. No yeah, offense, sorry, Coach. Mac. That well, is uh, better. Uh, 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 Mike, no offense, Mac. Mike, that, he, well, that is offensive right there. This is not all, really wow. offensive, Coach. <laughs> here we go. Thank you. There you go. But see, here here's what's really cool, Blake is Rhett Bryan is the master of collectibles. You have tons of collectibles for oh, a, yeah. a variety of things. Sure. When you see him wearing something like the neon oil, Derek. Do you want one? You want one of those, right? Yeah. I, I was going to say, I mean. <laughs> on every day that ends in Y, uh -huh. yes. Absolutely. But, I mean, that's a great. Uh, it's fantastic. I, mean, I admire cool. that you wear it. Will your neck hurt tomorrow? A little bit. Yeah. Well, it's good to be honest. He's got all the patches too. He's, he's got, got. He's got. He's got all the different. He's got all the different patches. You know who would love this? Uh, uh, that works at 104.5. That is a huge Titans fan. Is Ron Slay. Ron, Ron Slay, Slay would love that right there. He would. He actually I mean, would. He would yeah. approve of that. Chris, very that highly. is awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for being. Thank here. you for Thanks, being Chris. our model. Yeah. yeah. We appreciate, appreciate you. you. Well, that's awesome. I mean, this is. Um, but but this is why we do this, Rhett. I mean, when you, 100%. When you think about when we started coming to Chattanooga in 1998, and we went to see WDEF TV, and we said, Would you carry our games? We, because as the CBS affiliate, they had the AFC package, 
And they said, we'll carry your games. And they have carried our games every day ever since from 1998 on to help us create a fan base in this part of the state. WGOW, uh, Talk Radio 102.3 and News Talk 1150. They've been with us since the Memphis year. They might have even carried the Houston Oilers final year in 1996. I think they wow. were a founding flame member. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know that we've had a market outside of Nashville where there's been more synergy in terms of with the games being available and the promotion. I, I can't speak to the whole Fox thing in town. That's another deal. But our CBS partner has been great. And, you know, for this to be able to develop, how old a man are you, Blake? I'm 41. You're 41. And where are you originally from? Just outside of Birmingham, Alabama, Just, a little town mm, called Pleasant Grove. I've been mm. to Pleasant Grove. I know it. Sure he uh, has. Were you a, how long have you been a Titans fan? I started caring about the pro game right about the time the team moved to okay. Nashville. So you're and, of course, four, we don't have pro teams. You're 14 or 50. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we market into Birmingham. We market Huntsville. We market Florence. We, you know, all really from Birmingham north. And the same way, you know, we've got a station in Scottsboro, Alabama, WWIC. Yes, indeed. Our main man, Greg Bell. Greg Bell. So, I mean, it's just followed into the theory of what we were trying to do. And to see all of you here in this way, and I don't mean to be corny, but I am. That's it, fine. It's, <laughs> I mean, it's really emotional and a dream come true for us because when we started this, not everybody wanted to be that associated with what we were doing. And so to come down here and get to spend today with you guys actually watching college baseball, but that's good too, um, in a great place with a great atmosphere and with your excitement for the season, it's really special. And I'm, I'm thanking you on the OTP, but I'm actually thanking everybody in the room for um, – Okay, okay, I'm not leaving. I'm just going to stay. It's just a little emotions, guys. Say Chattanooga, okay. Mike, for a cheap pop. Yeah. Say Chattanooga. Chattanooga! <laughs> hey, there it is. Works every time. There it is. <laughs> every time. Mike, I I'm going to piggyback off of what you said. And, and Blake, this is super important with because he and I have done them all together. We're always on the, diff the other part of it, and we don't ever get to see this. When there was no Tennessee Oilers, when there were no Titans – in Nashville, there were certain establishments like Tailgate Brewery where there were watch parties of the established national team of the week that you saw every week before there was NFL Sunday tickets. So the Washington, Green Bay, Dallas, you know, for there to be that here, and I know there's other places, it, it warms my heart just to know that y'all care just as much as we care and that you congregate together. Football brings people together. That's the bottom line. Absolutely. And, I mean, I'm, it's, it's and I'm glad that you're nice to other fans. I, seriously, because that's, I mean, to be able to enjoy it, just like a draft party and people at the draft, I mean, this is, I mean, this is serious business to us because this is what we do for a living, but it's got to be fun, right? Right. And it feels like you people have fun. All, yeah, that's what I, uh, <laughs> feels like I'm with the fun people. All right, so, the fun people. Blake, here's what's really important. You're on the OTP, the official Titans podcast. Did you know what the OTP was until I said that? I knew it. Okay, thank you. Do you know what it stands for? <laughs> stands for, for official, official Titans, Titans podcast. Because it Will, doesn't go well Will we Levis ask. and Peter Skaronsky didn't on a recent OTP. And it was not good for us. No. Not a good reflection. It was really bad yeah. for me. Yeah. Uh, you know, just, what did they say? It operates territories positively. What did they say OTP was? No, oh, he it said was it was um, off season training phone calls. But then low key, Peter Skaronsky said it was called on the prowl. On the prowl. Which is, <laughs> we didn't pick up which on Which is it. so bizarre. And Mike and I just blew right past it. Didn't even notice. <laughs> and then we're listening to it back and we were like, that's the funniest that's thing awesome. I've ever heard. <laughs> on the prowl. Like, that's what it really should be. We which should be one of us looks like we would be the co-host of a podcast called On the Prowl. There it is. There he the is. Right Thank there. you. Thank you. <laughs> there he is. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, oh, I, I'm glad God. to be known as that person. The Prowl guy? The Prowl guy. I don't guy. think you want to be that guy. You don't? I don't think you want to be Prowl guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, Blake, let's get to more important things here. You have former NFL head coach Dave McGinnis sitting right in front of you. You are on Mac Talk, a.k.a. the OTP. You can ask Coach Mack your questions. Coach Mack saw more 
off-season practices than anybody other than someone on the staff. He went to OTAs. He went to the mini camps. He saw walkthroughs. He spent time with Bill Callahan and some of the other coaches. So right now there is nobody who understands what the 2024 Titans may look like more than Coach Mack. Fire away with your questions for Coach Mack. Be easy, please. I mean, you know. I haven't done this very long in this league, so it makes me real nervous. You're our wow. guest, so you're our guest, so we'll Go be ahead. very nice. So, Go ahead. so I know we all know about the big names in the off season. Yeah, I know going into this off season, everybody was really aware that we were looking at a rebuild, right? So, but we all think now after that draft and after the off season that we may be further along than we thought. We're all familiar with the big names in the draft and in free agency, but who do you see making the biggest impact? Maybe a late round draft late round draft pick maybe even an undrafted free agent that can make a quick impact okay here's the here's the story on that first of all during all the OTAs he's right I spent a lot of time with Bill Callahan and watching him just fundamentally incrementally improve the fundamentals of this offensive line okay you talk about you know the big names you know J.C. Latham okay but just watching Callahan work with him and 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 Skaronsky uh, and, you know and watching those guys work that that is important plus Lloyd Cushenberry who we who we, who we just signed in free agency. The left side of this offensive line that has been a problem the last couple of years. I mean, let's just, let's just be honest. I mean, that, we're always honest here. We've had some offensive line. The left side of this offensive line is set. Now, are they, are they all set like they're going to – are they as good as they're going to be? No. But that's set. The right side of the offensive line, I could start naming off names, but until, these, until the big dudes put the pads on, then you're just guessing. I don't like to guess in this thing. The thing that I the thing that I do like when you start looking at, at some of the draft choices, this draft class with Rand Carthon, he piggybacked it really well. Piggybacked it really well off of what he did in free agency. We got some huge uh, free agency signings. Starting the receiver room, the kid from Tulane that we took, Jaquan Jackson. Just because of the way the new kickoff rules are, I'm looking uh, really forward to watching to see how he can be incorporated into that. The Brownlee kid, mm-hmm. the cornerback that we took out of Louisville, kind of had a little spurt at the end of uh, at the end of the OTAs when he got he, healthy, wh- wh- yep. where he started kind of trying to show. You know, he started showing up a little bit. I always try to reserve because I've been doing this a long time as a coach. Any of my any of my thoughts, rather than proclaiming somebody all metro. You know, all Metro Center <laughs> at, 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 after OTA. I want to see when these guys get their pads on. But those, but those, those, those two guys, you know, caught my eye. They really, they, they, they really did. Uh, Cedric Gray, the linebacker, comes in here from North Carolina. Frank Bush, I know very well this linebacker coach. And I ask him, you know, because I'm with the coaches a lot. Mike's right. And I ask him, what about Gray? He said, he said, Mac, the first thing I've got to train, which you always do on. Qu- linebackers in this league got to train his eyes because in, in the collegiate game the, the the field dimensions are different so the eyes and what they're looking at is completely different so he's training him to play like an NFL linebacker and if I heard it once I heard it 200 times during this OTAs to, to Cedric Cedric eyes before feet eyes before feet eyes before feet which means you've got to know what you're looking at and where to look before you start moving so but I think, I think we're going to see incremental improvement with him. I'm really excited to watch us when we practice against the Seattle Seahawks because when I was coaching, those, those practices against another team, those are even more valuable than the preseason game for this reason. A preseason game, you're not guaranteed that your first team is going to play against their first team because once it gets to the game, it's up to the coaching staff as to how they want to disperse those reps. But when you have, have practices, joint practices with another team, you can, you've got ones against ones for two days, full go, no fair dodging. That, that is, that's going to be the first time I think we can really get a feel for what this football team's going to be. And you're right, it's been reset, but it's been reset to the mold. This is going to be a different offense than you've ever been used to watching, watching the Titans play. The Titans have always been a heavy running back. Can I turn around and talk like this? Yeah, I can. This is it's always been a, it's always been a heavy uh, running back centric offense. Earl Campbell, Eddie George, C.J. Two K, Derrick Henry. Throughout the throughout the time, that's not going to be this offense anymore. 
you've got two very similar backs now that are going to be very, very different. It's going to be, you know, three wide receivers, which is 11 personnel. And just watching this offense come together, I mean, you're going to see a different type of offense. It's huge for us to watch the, the development of the quarterback. That is going to be huge for us. But, I, 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 you know, people ask me, Mac, how about Will Levis? Will Levis is working. He can't work any harder on what he's doing. And, and, and listening to Brian Callahan and watching these guys coach him, he's learning, he's learning the nuances of what this offense is. This is going to be an exciting time, especially early on. You know, I, I'm excited to watch it because I've kind of watched it come together a little bit, as Mike has said, during these OTAs. But I know what these guys are being taught, and that's as important as anything. And the other thing is the players are buying in now, and they and when the players start carrying the message of the coaches to the locker room, that's when you got a chance. Because coaches can talk all they want, but until players carry the message to the locker room, that's when this buy-in starts. What was your question? What was your question? <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fine. I would say if you had to pick one, late round draft pick or even an undrafted free agent. Jaquan Jackson. Love it. Sixth round, two lane. Yeah, no, I, I really like his attitude. I like what he does. Every day after practice, he's out there on the jugs machine. Uh, Tyke Tobert is a, is a receiver coach. I hired Tyke Tobert into this league when I was the head coach of the Cardinals. Gave him his first job in this league. He's been a receiver coach now for 25 years in the league. He he is. Uh, I talked to Tyke about him. He says this kid bends his ear relentlessly, just wanting to learn. Jaquan Jackson, number 19. Love it. Watch him. All right, any more questions? Well, I love how you mentioned the new kickoff rules. This is one of the biggest changes to the overall game as far as a Ma rules change we've massive, seen in a while. Massive. So how much do you see that impacting strategy going into this new season? Massive. It, 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 that's going to be that's going to be one of the most interesting parts of watching games, especially in the preseason. And I don't know how much the preseason is going to show you uh, because teams will hold things back. But I'll say Mike Keith has been talking about this for years in the booth, ever since I've been with him. He hated the kicking. The, you know, just the, it was just, just a ceremonial kickoff, and then it would come back. This is going to be an offensive play now. The strategy for this is going to be it, it's fascinating. Uh, uh, John Fossil, Bones Fossil, who who's a, is a special teams coach at Dallas, had a huge part in this. You know, I've, I've visited with him quite a bit, you know, from the combine on about what this is. These coaches are going to have to decide not only how they're going to attack it from the receiving part of it, but how they're going to attack it from the coverage part of it, too. It, it, it will be – it will be. it's going to be a lot of fun to watch, but it, that's a massive, massive rule change, massive rule change. Blake, um, we want to give you something as a group. Wow. And – our hope is that you can draw your winners out of here on game days. I love that. But or I just wear it around. But I, mean, I also whatever hope. You want. <laughs> sure. I also hope that maybe you'll all come and touch it for luck at the start of the game. That'll love be that your too. thing. And that uh, wherever you go, the Chattanooga Titans fans will carry around this game worn Titans helmet. That is the real thing. You guys are the real thing. Oh, yeah. Men and women, thank you so much. And thanks for taking time with us on the awesome. OTP. Thanks, guys. All right. SeatGeek is good. the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee <laughs> Titans. Whether yeah, you're sure. buying or selling tickets to the Titans games or any live event in Nashville, and you can use it in Chattanooga, too. <laughs> SeatGeek is the official place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So Titans fans can fan. We're having a great time here in Chattanooga. Um, this will be part of our uh, Follow Me Through Tennessee series on uh, all of our visual channels this fall as well. Her visual channel. Well, but I mean, this yeah. is, you know. TV shows, TV YouTube, shows. To yeah. socials, all of the things. It actually has been a lot of fun doing this Follow Me series. It's been so much fun to just get out, get out of the office, get out into the world, meet people, talk to people. There's so much excitement about this Titans team, especially right now. Because there's so many new things going on. And people just want to talk about it. Sure. They want to know what's going on. And so it's been so much fun for us to get out, to meet people, to talk to people, and be able to have those conversations. And it feels a little reminiscent of the caravans of Titans yesteryear. Caravan. Yeah, it, yeah. F it feels very similar to that, where we're able to go to these places and just have conversations with people. Because that's what the caravan really that's always was. That's what the caravan was. I mean, it just... It never gets old, and Rhett can take this too because he rode on caravans. 
when you just go see people and you have a chance to spend time one-on-one and, and certainly those moments on the caravan were very special like that. But even to this day, the, the one-on-one contact and being able to talk about the team, um, we love the team. We love to talk about the – you know, I was talking to a guy last night while I was pumping gas. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's, it's – he's like, what do we got? I said, well, we're better. Yeah. That's good news. How much better? We don't know yet. We'll see. But we got better players, and better players are going to help us get there. Uh, we love doing it, Red, and it, no matter how much technology changes or anything else changes, that never gets old, that one-to-one contact. No, and to hear the stories of uh, – I, I talked to a, a, a neighbor not too long ago about where they were the night that the Titans came back on Monday Night Football against the Miami Dolphins last season. And just, you know, different uh, touch points throughout uh, Titans history of, you know, things that have happened and what was it like and what were you doing. And, again, football brings people together. It is a huge common thread where we live in the Mid-South and like many other parts of the country. But uh, being able to come see folks in their neck of the woods, it's it's good. It's It breaks up the monotony of, of what we do, too. I like being able to go visit everybody. So I think that – we could and have before do entire podcasts just about caravan and memories Mm -hmm. and different stories that we could tell. But probably the number one question that I have been asked recently is where's the caravan? When are you coming back on the caravan? What is happening? We want to see you in insert city here. Mike Keith, do you know, do you have that answer? Because I, I don't well, know. Well, thanks for I putting say me ask, on the spot. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, I say ask Mike is well, usually. There, there Welcome to, to tell the truth. <laughs> there hasn't been a Titans caravan since 2019. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I think uh, the, the biggest thing that changed the Titans caravan was the lockout in 2011. Yep. Mm-hmm. Prior to that, we would get on a bus – and we would go out for 10 days, and we would do a minimum of five stops a day, and we would trade players in and out. Like, for example, we came to Chattanooga, and in Chattanooga, Brad Hopkins had been with us all day, and so then we would do the big stop at Hamilton Place Mall, and we would have a car with the late Don Roy, who drove our players, and Don would drive the, the player, would drive Steve McNair to Chattanooga. Brad Hopkins and Steve McNair would do the stop together. And then when the stop ended, Brad Hopkins would get in Don's car and go back to Nashville, and Steve would stay. And then he would go to Cleveland the next day. He would go to Athens the next day. He would go to Lenore City. He would go to Oak Ridge. And then we would end the day in Knoxville – and Javon Curse would come, and so then Javon and Steve would do the stop together. So that was how that worked. When the lockout happened in 2011, there was no caravan that year. We had something planned. It just, it, it just wasn't going to work, and so we didn't do it. The new collective bargaining agreement went into effect at the end of the lockout. In the new collective bargaining agreement – the players' off-season program went from 16 weeks to nine weeks. In the 16-week program, Jeff Fisher would let a player off of the off-season program for a day to go on the caravan, which he could do because they had 16 weeks. Well, now with only nine weeks, Mike Munchak, who was the new coach, wasn't real excited about doing that. And so we kept the caravan going – for a few years with, you know, some, some, some duct tape and some, you know, bailing wire, whatever. And then it became just going out for the afternoon because players couldn't be gone overnight. And that got harder and harder because you could only go places that you could get in an afternoon. So, We couldn't get back to Knoxville. We couldn't get back to Memphis. We couldn't get to Huntsville and Birmingham. Uh, It was a very limited thing. And so with that being the case, we just ended up going to certain places nearby. 
wasn't quite the same thing. Um, it didn't quite feel the same because the further we got from away from Nashville, the crazier people got. Mm-hmm. When we went to Tri-Cities or we went to Birmingham or we went to Paducah, Kentucky with a big-name player, I mean, it was, it was like – Well, Jackson has always been one of the biggest stops on the caravan. Jackson was consistently – Jackson and Chattanooga were consistently – I've the, seen two-and-a-half-hour yeah. waits for, you know, guys to get well, autographs and meet. And it, and, and it changed. And so, I think the demands of the football season yeah. with the off-season program really changed it. I don't know that it will be back – but it certainly won't be back in the form that we had it when many of the people listening to the OTP were young. Mm. And they have those great memories the same way we do, but it just can't exactly be the same now. You know, the thing also that's going to affect that, Mike, is the new uh, – we may have a new system in place for the offseason coming up in the league, you know, that, that, that has been proposed. And so it's, th- that's going to change it even more. I think we will have that. Yes. I think as they, as everybody gets that we're going to 18 regular season games and, right. we, and it's coming, it's coming. I think the players and the players association want to get ahead of it. And they're trying to make the off season back up more to training camp. Yep. And, you know, it was interesting to listen to some players throw a fit when they heard that, and yet it was the NFLPA that proposed it, that proposed it having gotten feedback from players. So I don't know how those two worlds merge. Well, and, Mike, here's the other thing that is ironic in this, and, no, they're not the same thing what I'm going to bring up, but Mac knows this because you lived it the first few years you were an assistant coach. Training camp was six weeks long, Mm -hmm. two-a-days. Mm-hmm. And so, yo, know, it's not going to be anything of that semblance, but it did butt up closer to the season. A lot of that because back then guys had jobs in the offseason selling insurance, cars, whatever, Concrete Charlie, Chuck Pidnarik, and, you know, I mean, guys had to do things. And then you went to training camp to get in shape. And so it's interesting to me that it's leaning back towards a little of a resemblance of that. Well, that's what they want it to be. I mean, it's much like the high schools in Tennessee mm-hmm. outside of the two-week dead period. You, you practice all summer. Yeah. And so then you have the three-week buildup to the start of when you put pads on. You know, when they come back from July 4th week. It's on. It's on. Yeah. I mean, they are J- – July 8th, they are rolling toward the, the high school football season, and they feel like it helps them to ramp up in a better way. And that's what the Players Association has been talking about. It's going to be interesting, Mike, because when I first got into the league – we never saw the after the playoffs were over. We never saw the players again until a three day mini camp after the draft, wow. and you had three days, and then you never saw them again until camp started. But camp was five and a half, six weeks long, and you went right into the season just like that. That's I mean I've lived this way that they're proposing again to go back to, and it's just it's very interesting now because. Now all the off-season work that these guys do is really, really important, especially, and I bring this up for this reason. When I first got into the league, there was no free agency. There was no salary cap. Now when you're incorporating 34% of your team brand new right. every year, like what we're going through this year, yeah. you have to have your guys in early or they'll never be able to get together and coalesce until the, the, a month into the season. So, Mac, i got to ask this. Based on what the early suggested models of this have been, we know you, – you mentioned it earlier right here in this OTP of how important joint practices are. Is it a chance for teams to do more of those no, they, kinds of things because you would have, in this case, two preseason games and 18 regular season games? Absolutely. Everybody will, do, everybody will do two or three. The Rams this year are working against two teams – and then one team twice, so they're working four practices in their in their in their training camp against another team. Everybody everybody will start to do that. When I first got into the league, there were eight teams that trained in Wisconsin. Call it the Cheese League. Eight teams, and we practiced against those guys entire training camp. We would go, they would switch off different teams. We're going to see that again. Overall, I think it makes a lot of sense towards what the players want. If, if that is indeed what the players want. I mean, right, they, there you go. I, I mean, you read the article and you think, oh, well, that's interesting that they're putting it out there. And then you have several players go, no, we, we really <laughs> – No, thank you. We really don't want that. Um, 
I, I guess the question becomes overall how much meeting time do they allow because there's talk that you would they would be able to have some meetings in the spring there would not be anything required on field but they would have a chance to essentially have offensive meetings and defensive meetings and position meetings and things of that sort so i mean we'll certainly see where it all goes we'll see where it goes mike you're right but it but we're going to have 18 games and that's just going to happen. I mean, when the commissioner comes out and says the thing that the preseason product is inferior, mm. oh, by the way, 32 teams have to go out and sell preseason tickets, mm-hmm. uh, which makes it pretty tough. And it, it's obvious that he's just turning it toward the 18. And I think there's less pushback because I think the players like the fact that they're getting more money. Oh, it's more money. from The, the 17th game means more dough in their pocket. Yeah, and the 18th game, that, 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 it's coming. It's coming, and it's, gonna, it's just going to be very interesting. And so this was thrown out by the NFLPA, and they didn't completely uh, think through it, but it was thrown out as a potential bargaining chip. Mm-hmm. Here's, a, here's a beginning talking point. It's a, it's, this is what this is about. Because right now we're in that five-week period yep. where everybody's off. Yeah, We're able is, to come out right now because there is nobody football in our office. It is summertime. And, th- I mean, and that's part of all of this conversation beyond, I mean, what actually matters is the players and the coaches and what they want to do. There is a very big impact on the support staff as well because for guys like sure. the equipment guys and the trainers and the strength and conditioning folks and some of the support staff in the kitchen and the nutritionists and all of those people who also need to be there to service the football team, this changes the entire structure of their lives as well. And, the play- and, and some of the players who've complained are mm-hmm. older guys who have kids yeah. Oh, by the way, you want to go on a vacation May fifth? If you've got two kids in school, that you're ain't not happening. going anywhere. Or Timmy's playing travel ball, yeah. and I want to go to That's a lot right. of yeah. his games. And yeah, yeah. yeah so it, it just there's a lot of things that are off the field related that also are needing to be taken into consideration with all of this. It's going to be really interesting to see how it unfolds. But for right now, I've got my five weeks of summer. But it's about money. Of course. It's about, it's, money. about money. it's about money for everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody. And with that being the case, that's where it's going to end. I mean, because the players complained mightily about the 17th game. Mm-hmm. And I get it. I think everybody got it. And then they realize what they make off the TV of the 17th game, mm-hmm. especially because the league has found all these new revenue streams to pay oh, – oh, by the way, we're going to put a playoff game on streaming. Here's $100 million extra dollars that, <laughs> you know, that they get 50-something percent of in terms of the, of the collective bargaining agreement. Right. I mean, they're partners in this deal. Sure they are. I mean, they, they, it's, it, it, at the end of the day, it's a business. Mm-hmm. And, and, that, and the business part of it is going to, is going to determine a lot of this. But 18 games is coming. And with an 18th game – do we think that there will be an adjustment in the bargaining agreement in terms of practice squad size sure. mm-hmm. and yep. extra bye week? Well, the extra bye week thing is interesting. Mm-hmm. And if you're one of the OT people or you're with us in Chattanooga, Chattanooga. Yeah. cheap pop. Every time. Cheap pop for Mike. Every time there it he works. Is. I oh love my. these people. Oh, my god! I gosh. love them. Oh, my gosh. But – the league does not want to play on Labor Day. No. They do not want to play on Labor Day. That was a bad calendar. It was horrible. It's a bad calendar. And, and not because they want to go skiing at the lake, but because HUD levels, which is the, the, the way TV is measured, people watching their TVs are so low Labor Day weekend because it's the last time a lot of people around the country yep. get to get away. And there are still, even though not here in Tennessee and in other places in the South, there's still a lot of parts of the country that don't start school until after Labor Day. Yep. Yep. And so people get away. And then what happens, and this happened to the NFL for years with the TV ratings, they would have these great week 15 numbers and week 16 and week 17, and it was so fantastic. And they'd be down year over year for the season. 
And it was like, why? And it was because the first weekend of the year, Labor Day, killed them. Mm-hmm. So they're not going backwards that way. Nope. But I know where I you're going. It, I, think it's, I think it is less likely that there would be an extra buy than there would be more roster spots because I think it'll be 18, as it stands now, I think it's 18 games in 19 weeks with the idea that the Super Bowl is played President's Day weekend. Yep. And President's Day becomes the national holiday piggyback. President's Day and Super Bowl, everybody recover. Another another yeah. way to make the game even bigger. Yep. Yep. You've got like, Super Bowl Monday. Yep. Like sleep. I think there's going to be I think there's going to be a Super Bowl in London. I think that's going to happen. That sounds exhausting. I know. I love the London games, but like. I think there's going to be a Amy? Super Bowl in Nashville before there's a Super Bowl in London, but I think. That sounds less exhausting. That I'm into. I'm here for a Nashville Super Bowl. But like, you're going to send me I, to tell- London in, in February? Hey. Oh. But if the Titans oh. are playing in it. Yeah. Come on. I'd go Still to Antarctica so t- if the Titans I absolutely were would. I, I'm just going to need a nap. Or I would two. go to the We're doing our broadcast at the base of, of a volcano? Yeah. Yes, let's go. <laughs> I don't care. The face of the sun. I let's mean, do this. Whatever we have to do. Amy. You guys get more sleep than it, I do. If, if we're going to the sun and volcano, yeah. you and I are not. Okay, good. Thanks, yeah, Matt. There you go. We'll just we'll zoom in. We'll zoom in. <laughs> have fun on the sun. Have fun on the sun. In well, a volcano. I, but I do. I mean, the Super Bowl in Nashville is coming. And yes, that's, that's, I mean, that, so that's epic. Coming. That is 100% coming. I think the Final Four is coming. Mm-hmm. I think the college football playoffs coming. Mm-hmm. Yep. I'm hoping the SEC championship will be there. Yes. Uh, I, th- I mean, this it's is the so- literal definition of if you build it, they will come. I talked to a neighbor of mine this week who just bought her tickets. She and her husband bought their tickets in the new stadium. And, you know, they were just talking about how great Titans house was and how fired up they are. And they just can't believe what a state of the art facility this is going to be. It's a facility for the world. Yeah. 100%. I mean, this is, it's going to be first class in every sense of the world. And that just feels like such an understatement. (laughs) Right. I mean, first class, you're like, Oh, that's nice. But like, this is going to be, just something that Nashville has never seen before. This will be my third stadium build in okay. my NFL career. And incrementally, they get better. The yeah. one in Arizona, then the one in L.A., we know what that is. This one here, from what you can see so far, it's going to be wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the possibilities are really limitless because have you been? Uh, I've been watching some of the Olympic swimming trials at Lucas Oil Stadium. Yeah. Wild, right? Sure, they have a dang swimming pool on the football field. Yeah. It's like they turned it into an aquarium. It's really weird. But, I mean, if you can do that, you can do that in Nashville. Well, and that's the point. You know, those sorts of things. That's that's a great point, Rhett, and you're dead on. You can do those sorts of things. The other part of it, too, is you think about trade shows. And and the Nashville City Center is amazing. You know, we've got a, a place that's really amazing but there are bigger trade shows that are worldwide type events that go into a Lucas Oil Stadium or go into an NRG Stadium in, in Houston because of the size that Nashville will now be able to compete for because in 2027, Nissan Stadium has a roof. And the other thing, now Amy Wells is probably not going to like this, but you could have the NFL Combine in Nashville. You no. Will, you will have the NFL Combine nah. in Nashville. You can certainly have the NFL draft back in Nashville. Which w- is That's awesome. That's been done. Yes, absolutely. I'm all in. Yes. If you, d- you think about our health care system in Nashville, you know, and the – For all the medical checks for all the, the medical. Players. I mean, yeah. like that won't be amazing in Nashville. I think you'll definitely have the combine there. But listen, you and Coach Mack don't like it, but the combine is going to move. It's not moving right now. No. By the way, it is – Because we keep fighting it. It's Stay fe- strong, people. It's February 24th through March 3rd this coming year. Yeah, it'll be great. February 24th to March 3rd. Yes, sir. Book it. 2025. So, get your rooms. So, so, well, so then that means I need to get reservations for us at, <laughs> at St. Elmo's. Elmo's, right? Do well, we, it now. We have a game there beforehand if you want to do that. We already got one for that. Don't okay, worry good. About it. We're, we're good. We're good on that. Max yeah, on we're, it. We're check. already good. No, I, I <laughs> That's mean, a check. Uh, of the cities, it 
has been rumored to move to. Nashville really does make a lot of sense oh, for the yes. way the city is laid out, for where the stadium is going to be. There's so many things that make it make sense. If it's in Nashville, I'm all good for it. If it's in Nashville, I'm it's all good. It's just not the same. I need there to be like two streets of people where everybody knows everybody and we're all in the same little That was pod. called Friends. I know, and I loved it. It was a TV show. I just – I. You've got a lot of nostalgia there. I just want you it to really all do. be in its little. You don't want anything to ever contain. change. No, some things can change. I would love to have the Super Bowl in Nashville. You're going to. And I think that would yeah, be get lovely. Get ready for that. I think hey, that would be so great. We go through this all the time. I mean, this this is this is a constant thing. It, 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 it's Amy. I, I'm not even going to try. It's, it's Amy. I give up. It's Amy and Mike, and both of them make great points. But here's the key. And, I'm right. And y'all, and y'all see. <laughs> here it is. Neither one of them listens to the other one. <laughs> they don't care. They don't care what the other one says. All right, go ahead. Were you talking? No. Go ahead. Sorry. The Rolling Stones will come there in 2029, <laughs> and Mick Jagger will be 97 <laughs> years old. Oh, they'll definitely be there. But think about the concerts, though. Anything you can name. Anything. It will ha- mm-hmm. they'll be there. Everything is on the table. Well, yeah, you yeah. Name A, yep. it's Nashville. Hello. Yeah. I mean, Post Malone is at the Bluebird the other night. Yeah. It's crazy. What? Do yeah. we love country Post Malone, by I the saw way? him at Sonic. Did you? No. Oh. <laughs> wow. Took the bait, though. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Well, he would have been. You took, yeah. that, you took that hook. Uh-huh. <laughs> I just think it's cool. I love country Post Malone. But yeah, well, but any it, concert you can name, it's on the table. Well. Any of it. I mean, it, any of any genre. You know, because people, the, the music industry folks love to welcome people from all different genres and obviously country music is fantastic. And then, I mean, there's just that synergy, which is amazing. And the whole thing at this point is, is really exciting. And we talk about it, but it's becoming more and more real when you see the hole in the ground that is there. Now, Jim White wrote about it at Tennessee Titans.com. The, the trucks of dirt, Yep. That they're taking out one by one to Wilson County. Crazy. And they and they do. They literally have to take them out one by one. one. By one. It's not like you can get, you know, the biggest truck no. in the world. It's it's a dump truck and you put it on there and they're gonna have to make, you know, four hundred trips or something. Mm-hmm. It's crazy the amount of It's exciting stuff. to see those pictures though. When Jim posted that and posted that picture the other day, I was like, This is still amazing to me that it's happening. Yes. Mm-hmm. What do we think about safety prices coming down in the free agent market as we see guys, veteran safety? No, they'll come down. They'll, they'll come I mean, down. they really have. I and mean, they're, and they're, they're Marcus con- May and uh, who was the other one? Uh, Tony Jefferson. Tony, Tony Jefferson. Jefferson. I mean, yeah. those deals were very reasonable. Yeah. See, the, the, the Simmons kid has priced, you know, kind of priced himself out early on, but it'll come back. If he wants to play ball this year, it's going to come back down to the price. I mean, that water has sought its level at the running back position, mm-hmm. and and it's it, it's it's escalated at the wide receiver position. But that water is seeking its level now in the safety position. So if you want to play, you're going to play for within that parameter. What's important to remember, and I've been talking to some of the the Chattanooga Titans fans here about the difference monetarily for the Titans this time around is they didn't spend all the money. They did team friendly deals. They have stuff left to be able to do something like this, where in previous years, recently, all you've had is the float money you need transactionally as injuries pop up and whatever as it goes week to week through, this, through the season. So you've got some, some move, the, the only thing movability here is, is you, you can't afford to overpay for that position because you're, now they're in a position where they can start to layer these contracts. Right. They can layer the contracts now, and if you get out of whack now – they're not out of whack in any position because they've, they've married up the big money to length of contract. Well, the other part of it, too. Well, is, you know Rand. Just tell him don't. I mean, come on. Well, yeah, I know him pretty well, but I'm not going to tell him how to spend his money. But I know by having, Well, he would listen to you. Have, yeah, he would. By, but having done this before, <laughs> they're not going to get behind because it, it, we know what happened when they got behind. Well, and they're changing. We, we talked about this on the OTP when – Kevin Byard was traded, and people were really hurt, and it was, it was made very obvious at that time they, they just weren't going to pay a safety again. They, they aren't going to be at the top of the – going to pay corners. They're, they're going to pay corners. I think they'll continue to pay. They're going to pay pass rushers. They're not going to pay inside linebackers the same way. 
And on offense, they're not going to pay tight ends an incredible amount of money, and they're not going to pay running backs at the top of the chart. That money's going to wide receivers because they're going to be in three wides a great deal. That's that's correct. I mean, that's just that, that's that's that they're they're that's wor- the model. That's the model, and that's and that's what they're that's what they're working for. And when you're putting the contracts together and you're clearing a salary cap, which I've done, you've got you've got to not, it, you can't only do contracts for this year. You've got to look how contracts stair step on one another three that's and four, right. three and four years out. Well, the Titans have a bunch of cap room next year again. That's the key, but they don't want to use it all up with the idea that they'd like to, this year because the idea is they'd like to carry some of that money over you to have, next year. That's, that's what they want to do. And be in a position to say, okay, we definitely found our right guard. We've definitely found our uh, another outside linebacker. We've definitely found that this – you know, we say uh, Latham is definitely the left tackle of the future. And we're really excited about Tavondre Sweat at nose tackle. We think he's a player of the future, on and on and on. But you've said it well. They need another year of talent acquisition. Uh, absolutely they do. And that, that, that's, that's free agency and draft. And identifying who's continuing to take steps on your current roster. 100%. 100%. You know. Because what happens is, is and what, what happens when teams get in salary cap hell – is you start doubling up to catch up. Right. And, it, and it, it doesn't work on the craps table, and it doesn't work with a salary cap. And remember this, too, which shocks a lot of people. The Titans have, I think, a little over $30 million in dead money on the cap this year. Then, As they clean up more, even though they had so much room, they're still, they're still digging out. They're still digging out. Next year, not so much. Not so much. And the other part is, you know, if, if Will Levis – proves to be the guy. And he's going to get paid. He is going to get paid handsomely. But you use this time now and you use this time next right. year to do just what Mike Keith Well, you said. set up for when you, you, have, to pay for when you have to pay him $65 million. That you're not out of skew. And when you're looking at the pie chart of what's d- divided up by positionally, you're, you're in the right spot so you can be able to do that. But if Will Levis has played well enough to deserve that, mm-hmm. we're all happy. Oh, if he's, oh, pl- that, if he's played well enough to deserve that, been to the playoffs at least one of the next two years and mm-hmm. maybe both of them. What a great problem. What a great problem. And yeah. you said it, but Coach Mack has hit it dead on with the layering of the contracts because you you have to go forward with the thought, Rhett, that he's going to do it. You've got to say, Will Levis is going to do it. And because of that, we're going to get him an offensive line. We're going to get him receivers. There it is. You you don't stop and think this might not work. No, you can't. If it doesn't, it becomes obvious, and you have to do something about it anyway. But if you've set someone up for success, you can set whoever up for success. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's – I mean, I think that's what the plan is overall. And that's why this training camp, to me, will be – Probably the most interesting since the '99 training. Camp. Well, you said it going into this off season. You said this. Is Think about be- that, Rhett. You were there in '99. Yeah, a lot of water under the bridge, but it was. Uh, well, but it was the three straight. Eight it was the playoffs years. or pink slips year. That's right. It was the Javon Curse year. They'd it gone was- three years, eight and eight. They Mr. had the cornerstones. They had their quarterback and Steve McNair. They had their running back. They had their left tackle. They had all these things. And then a couple of moves here and there, but Javon Curse was the catalyst. But if they didn't make it, Jeff Fisher will be the first to tell you they were all getting fired. Yeah, they were gone. Yeah, and it's just this league. Yeah, and then that team just continued to gel in training camp, and then continued to gel through the season. Well, but you said it. You said it at the, at the end of last year when we all got together, and you, you were you were spot on with this. This would could be was going into it, one of the most impactful off-seasons for this franchise. Mm -hmm. And they had to nail certain things. To this point, that's what they've done. And so that is why when you start looking at it, that's why I feel so good going into this thing. That's why these people can feel – From Chattanooga? From Chattanooga. There it is. (laughs) Cheap pop from Mike again. Can feel so good going in because they've started. They've started the process and they've been successful so far. Oh, it's absolutely gone. 
I think, as well as they could have hoped because Cushenberry was their number one target, the center. Got him. Got, Got him. him. Yeah. They wanted to add a big-time corner. Got they him. added one, and then, and the then Cheeto Awuze is another guy who can really play. They wanted to be able to add the left tackle in the draft. Got him. Yep. Did it. Uh, the receiver thing was something they wanted to do. Didn't think they could. Didn't think they could. Hoped they could. And then they steal Calvin Ridley away from Jacksonville. Yep. Oh. It was always Duval. It, yeah. was, it was always Duval. But, I mean, they're, they're going to be an interesting team. And when I talk to people, I, I mean, they're better. Yes. The Titans are better they're today. Better. They're better. In June than they were when we saw them in January beat Jacksonville and keep them from going to the playoffs. The talent's better. Now, what does that mean win loss wise? I don't, don't know. know yet. AFC South Champs. AFC South Champs. <laughs> there it is. Say here. That's what they yeah. say here in Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Yeah. Oh you were my too, goodness. We were too quick on that one, right? Oh, yeah. We man. need to get off here. Okay. But thank you all for being here. This is so fantastic. <laughs> It's been good. It's been great. It has been great. It has been great. Thank you to Tailgate Brewery in Chattanooga for allowing us to come and be part of this. Thank you to uh, everybody uh, who has been a part of it from the Chattanooga Titans fans. And uh, year six, they, uh, they're something special. And it, it means a lot to all of us to have this kind of support. I speak for the entire organization when I just say thank you. Thank you. Uh, for for what you do for us and for what all these fan groups do. We had a chance to come visit this one. I promise you we'll go see more. I absolutely promise you. (laughs) That's awesome. That's great. Just wrap it up, Mike. It's over. I'm actually coming back to Chattanooga. (laughs) On July the 12th for a lookouts game. Oh, yeah, the Titans are partnering with the Lookouts for a night, and I'm going to be here for that. Are you, like, throwing out the first pitch or We'll something? see if I can throw a baseball. Oh. Wait, are you really doing that? I was kidding. Are no, you I think there's that? talk of that, yeah. Mike. But oh, I, I'm coming. But I have not. When is this? <laughs> the July bionic the shoulder? With the bionic shoulder. Wow. The bionic shoulder's coming. All right, guys, okay. get in the car. Yeah, We're bionic, coming back. Bionic we've had let's, go. let's put it this way. We've had a caravan since I've thrown a baseball. So oh, this will be fine. So we'll see how that may work you, out you great. Got a, you got a brand new shoulder. You're I'm good. coming. That won't end up on social media anywhere. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Amy this can't is wait. Be great. When I hit somebody in row 14. Amy can't wait. Down the first baseline. I'll be there. Don't worry, Mike. <laughs> It'll be fine. For Rhett Bryant, for Coach Dave McGinnis, for Amy Wells, and for the Chattanooga Titans fans. <laughs> I'm Mike Keith. And this is the OTP.